session three or so, reading and meditating on the Buddha Dharma, Buddha's teachings. Mm. So I take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and Sangha until I become enlightened and I want, wish to become enlightened for the benefit of all others sentient beings. So uh, I'm going to read from this book uh, something that I found interesting. There's a lot of interesting things in this book. Buddhism, Its Essence and Development by Edward Conzey. Edward Conzey is, uh, is dead, but he did a lot for uh, Buddhism uh, in terms of uh, being a scholar and translating uh, the Heart Sutra and uh, and the Sutra that the Heart Sutra came from the the larger versions. <clears throat> uh, so I find it interesting. But he he did that probably in the fifty years ago or more. Uh, I was reading a little bit about. Uh, he lived from 1904 to 1979 and has been called the foremost Western scholar of the Prajnaparamita literature. That includes the Heart Sutra and the Diamond Sutra, if I'm not mistaken. And there's a, a large and medium and small sized versions of the, of the Perfection of Wisdom. Uh, there's a Perfection of Wisdom at in 8,000 lines in its first summary. Uh, and there's a larger version than that. And then there's a smaller version, I think. Let's see. Uh, so he must have did his translating back in the 50s or 60s, uh, or maybe 70s. <clears throat> mm, I found in a bookstore three three books of his at least that were translations uh, but in the wiki wikipedia uh, they are a little critical of some of his uh, ideas and transla translations uh, saying that he was a german bourgeoisie and an elitist and uh, other things, okay. But uh, this book uh, seems uh, pretty authoritative and he was influenced by D.T. Suzuki and he, uh, he tried to practice Buddhism. Uh, okay, so he's a scholar and syncretist. Oh, okay. So I'm going to read uh, a little bit from here, I found interesting. Um, some features distinguish Buddhism from other forms of wisdom. They are of two kinds. Much of what has been handed down as Buddhism is due not to the exercise of wisdom but to the social conditions in which the Buddhist community existed, to the language employed and to the science and mythology in vogue among the people who adopted it. One must throughout distinguish the exotic curiosities from the essentials of a holy life. Hmm, I found that interesting because, uh, yes, there's a... There may be a lot of difficulty in um, in understanding Buddhism because it's got uh, cultural trappings, you could say. <laughs> so you have to sometimes figure out uh, the history of the people that uh, found Buddhism uh, attractive and uh, and 
that developed it, like the Tibetan culture, mm, it's difficult because of the culture to uh, extract from it the Buddhism that's valuable to your life. That's what, number one. And uh, two, the, uh, what distinguishes Buddhism from other forms of wisdom. That was number one. Number two, there are a number of methods for winning salvation by meditation, of which the Buddhist tradition gives a clearer and fuller account than I have found elsewhere. That's interesting. It's saying that in Buddhism, you'll find uh, clearer and fuller accounts on meditation than in other uh, traditions or literature. But he clarifies that, um, that this is, however, largely a matter of temperament, properly studied the literature of the Jains, of the Sufis, of the Christian monks, of the Egyptian desert, and of what the Catholic Church calls ascetical or mystical theology, yields much of the same kind. So there is a contemplative sciences found in all traditions. You just have to study them properly. You can find uh, mystical uh, teachings in uh, all traditions. <clears throat> hmm. To a, pro a person who is thoroughly disillusioned with the contemporary world and with himself, Buddhism may offer many points of attraction in the transcending sublimity of the fairyland of its subtle thoughts in the splendor of its works of art, in the magnificence of its hold over vast populations, and in the determined heroism and quiet refinement of those who are steeped into it, although one may originally be attracted by its remoteness, one can appreciate the real value of Buddhism only when one judges it by the results it produces in one's own life from day to day. So there's a lot of things that attracted me to uh, Buddhism. It's it was uh, much of it was the art, but uh, in the end, um, the real value of Buddhism will be in um, the results produces in one's own life from day to day if one practices to them the the suggestions um what else um hmm. Mm -hmm. buddhism as a philosophy Philosophy, as we understand it in Europe, is a creation of the Greeks. It is unknown to Buddhist tradition, which would regard the inquiry into reality for the mere purpose of knowing more about it as a waste of valuable time. The Buddhist teaching is exclusively concerned with showing the way to salvation. Any philosophy there may be in the works of Buddhist authors is quite incidental. In the ample vocabulary of Buddhism, we find no word to correspond to our term philosophy. An analogy may clarify the position. The Chinese language, as the Chinese understood it, did not contain any grammar. It was taught in China without any grammatical instructions. Some European philologists on the model of our Latin grammatical categories have constructed a grammar for the Chinese language, but it does not fit particularly well and the Chinese continue to dispense with it. The Latin style grammar with its familiar 
categories may, however, help some Europeans to learn the Chinese language more easily. In a similar way, an attempt to define Buddhist thought in the philosoph philosophical terminology current in Europe may facilitate the approach to it. Buddhism as a philosophy could then be described as a dialectical pragmatism with a psychological turn. Let us consider these three items one by one. So I'll stop here. And what have we learned just now that that the authors of Buddhist literature did not think of Buddhism as a philosophy. They didn't have the word philosophy. And they didn't have the tools of Greek philosophy. They did some philosophy something that would appear to be philosophy every now and then. But their main focus was on whether the the thoughts and views and teachings uh, helped one's life. So it was more about Mm, whatever helps one to become a Buddha more so than mm, about the universe or about science. Or, uh, it was all focused on showing the way to salvation versus uh, figuring out the universe, scientifically speaking. Although occasionally there's some science, uh, material science in Buddhism, but not very much. It's more psychological. Okay, I'll stop there. So may this uh, meditation session benefit others. I dedicate it to others. Thank you.